Hi, today we're going to be talking about outliers in a data set. Okay, outliers are very, very important because outliers are numbers in your data set that kind of don't fit the norm. Okay, so these are data points who are not close to the majority of the data points. Okay, and this is just a little informal definition. You want to look at the definition in your book, but it's not that um, crazy of an idea that if you have a data set and you want your data to be consistent and then you get this one data point really really large or really really small that doesn't fit okay it could be an error it could be real okay sometimes they happen randomly and sometimes they are mistakes okay so the important thing is the process of how to determine these uh, data points so to find a data find an outlier to determine if a data point is a uh, outlier the first thing you want to do is find find the five number summary find the five number summary so if you don't know how to do that make sure you go back and watch that video on how to find the five number summary okay so next what we're gonna do is we are gonna define a cutoff we're gonna define and upper cutoff okay so let's just say let's say uh, all of our data I'm going to do a, a little box plot here okay let's say you have some point out here okay where this is the min the q1 the median the q3 and this may be the max Okay, there may be other data points here too, but this is the max. And there's some cutoff point up here for an upper outlier. Okay, so this would be an upper outlier. So this would be a data point that's a lot larger. There's some cutoff up here that we have to define that says if our data falls here, it's fine. But if the data point falls more than that, it's an outlier. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this Q3, which is the 75th percentile of our data. Okay, so we're going to take the Q3, and we're going to go ahead and add 1.5 times the IQR, which is really just 50%. We're adding 50%. We're adding the IQR plus 50% of the IQR. Okay, so any data point greater than this number is an outlier. Okay? And it doesn't matter if it's symmetric or skewed or anything. So this is our this is the definition of an upper outlier. Okay, and we're going to do an example on the on the next page. So let's do a lower outlier. This would be a number that's a lot lower than the rest of your data. Okay, and the concept's pretty much the same, but we're going we're going to be going uh, kind of backwards here. Not sure why I did that, but anyways. So you have some small data point over here, and you're kind of questioning, or you might have a, a bunch of them. You're questioning if these are outliers. So you go to Q1, you have a median, you have a Q3, and you have a max. Okay, so this is your box plot. This is your max over here. So we have to find some lower cutoff, some lower cutoff that says if you're here, then you're okay. But if you fall greater than this number, if you fall greater than this number, then you're considered an outlier. Okay, so the question is, is how can I find whatever this number is? We know it's less than... Q1, remember this is a number line. These are all going from least to greatest. Same thing up here, least to greatest. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do the same thing. So this is our lower cutoff. 
Okay, it's very, very similar. I'm going to go ahead and take Q1 here, which is the 25th percentile of our data, because 25% falls to the left. So I'm going to take Q1, and I'm, I'm going to go this way. So this way in mathematics is subtraction. I'm going to subtract 1.5 times the IQR. And the IQR is the interquartile range. It's a measure of spread in our data set. Okay, so any data point less than this number is an outlier. Okay, so that's the process on how to do it. So let's go ahead and jump to the next page and do an example. Okay, so for this I'm going to go ahead and bring out my calculator. So I don't have to manually find the all the things. Okay, so I'm going to put these in my calculator the same way. Okay, there we go. Okay, so it's important to kind of understand what our data set is. It's something I don't talk about too often, but it is very, very important. So I made this data set, the number of car accidents in Broward County each day for the past two weeks, Monday through Sunday, respectively. Respectively is something that um, they put in problems all the time, which just basically means it preserves order. So all this kind of means is this is going to be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, etc. Okay, so now... Our first step is we have to find our Q3 and our IQR, and we need to find our Q1. Q3 and Q1 and our IQR, because that's the process. And also I want to have like kind of an idea, like what numbers kind of shock you here, okay? So this may be a possible outlier, this one, uh, on this Sunday they had one accident, and let's see. Okay, so I have a 34 and a 35 which may be possible outliers. So now that I have my data in there, let's go ahead and find my uh, Q1 and my Q3. So stat, over to calc, and we want to scroll down. Oh, did I hit it? Okay. Okay, so my Q1 equals 10, and my Q3 equals 23, and my IQR equals 23 minus 10 which is 13 okay so these are my three important numbers here this is how I'm gonna define my upper and lower cutoff so let's go ahead and start with the upper cutoff the upper cutoff is going to be 23 plus 1.5 times 13. So let's go ahead and just run that in the calculator. Plus 13 times 1.5. Okay, and we get 42.5. 42.5. So this is our upper cutoff. So now we want to scan for our data, and I'm looking for a number that's greater than this. Okay, so in that case, we have no or you don't see any number that's greater than this number. This is my cutoff, so there's no upper outliers. Okay, now let's go ahead and do our lower cutoff. Let's do our lower cutoff. Okay, so now we want to start at uh, 10 minus 1.5 uh, times 13 and already we can see that this is going to be a negative number so all my numbers are positive so we're not going to have any outliers there so let's go ahead and uh, let's run this 10 minus 1.5 times 13 and you're going to get a negative 9.5 so now I'm looking for numbers for data less than less than this Remember, on a number line, if you're at negative 9.5, less than would be over here, all these numbers. So it would be something more negative than 9.5. Since these are all positive, they're all greater than 0, so we have no lower outliers. 
Okay. So, so I'm just going to go ahead really, really quick, and I'm just going to add. Okay, I'm gonna just going to add 100 in here, because obviously 100 is going to definitely be an outlier. Okay. And uh, I'm going to do stat. Okay, so I'm just going to do sort of the same thing. So let's say I did, if I did have 100 in here, just to show you what, what this would look like. So this would be, uh, this is kind of the new new problem, because I want you to see what an outlier looks like, a new problem. So say I had 100 in here. Okay, so let's check to see if that's an outlier. Q3 plus 1.5 times the IQR. Let's see if it changed much. 25. So you can see that huge outlier doesn't change much. It does not change. It does not change that much. That's called, um, it's resistant. It's resistant, which we'll learn about later also. So let's see, 25 plus, I think this is 22.5. Okay, so I get 41.5. Okay, which is a little strange because how is this more than that? But it's okay. Okay, so I'm looking at this number and I'd scan through and say, well, where does 100 relate to this guy? Oh, 100 is greater than, or 41, 100 is uh, greater than, greater than this number. So therefore, this is and upper outlier okay now that we have one example with and one example without let's go ahead and double check to show you what this would look like okay with the outlier in the graph so you could double check to see so I want to go to my stat plot okay I want to hit enter and if you notice here okay, I'm going to turn my plot on I'm going to go down. I want to go to this one right here with the two little dots, the box plot with the two little dots. That's a modified box plot. I'm going to go right here. And if I if I go and oh, no, change my list, I'm in list one. Okay. And I'm having a little trouble, so you guys won't have to actually do this step, but but here, zoom nine and. It doesn't look like it won't change, dummy. Okay, so there we go. So now I'm on there. Now I'm definitely on. I have a modified box plot. And I want to zoom nine. Now we're going to see. You see this lone point over here, how it's not connected? How it's not connected to this graph? That means that this is an outlier. It graphs outliers. And I'll show you what it would do if I didn't have that 100 in there originally. Originally, I, when I did the problem, we did not have, we did not have outliers, okay? So if I did this problem and I didn't have outliers, I would double check it by coming over here, making sure that I have this modified box plot with my data in here, okay? You won't have to do that step. Zoom nine. Now look. There's what you're doing is you're looking outside of this whisker over here and outside of this whisker. And what you're looking for is uh, points that are alone. If you have a point that's alone, then that means you you have an outlier. Okay. So that's it um, on how to find the outliers. Make sure you go through this a couple times and make sure that you understand it. Play around with the calculator and. It's not that hard of a process, but it's a formula that's usually forgot by the end of the year. Um, so make sure you practice it. Thank you for listening so much. I appreciate it, and have a nice day.